we spend a lot of energy and time to essentially build the security within the infrastructure. Uh, so that's the effort that we do as providers of, or as cloud computing vendor. Now the question is, uh, how does our customer uh, in fact verify? So if you look in cloud computing, there's a shift. In the current computing environment, it's the enterprise who essentially has the burden of securing that infrastructure. When you move now into the clouds, it's the cloud computing vendor which carry the burden. But the audit, the verify, if you prefer, still remains obviously uh, at the customer level. So the question becomes, how can the customer ensure that now the data that he has, in fact, uh, that now that online provider guards, if you prefer, is properly taken care of. So there's many ways of doing that. Uh, with our customers today, we provide them, obviously, uh, SAS 70 level 2 reports, which means we make the declarations about what are the precautions that we've taken, and this is audited by a third party, and we do that every six months. We have also security and penetration test security reviews of our architecture, and penetration testing. We have also code reviews. So what we do is we disclose all of that you know, to our customers, essentially, and they could also audit the data center. So we do that essentially for our larger customers, obviously, than for the smaller ones. But these are all the disciplines that, in addition to ensuring that you have your know, reliability and availability, you have to, to, to put all that effort at ensuring that effectively you secure the data and that your customers can in fact have that assurance. We can uh, make the effort of essentially creating, building the security inside, you know, making it, as I call it, invisible. It costs money, but the big advantage of cloud computing is that we can amortize you know, that cost of building that security across all of our users, we can also attract the very specialists who know how to do that. So we're in a very, you know, in, in, in a stronger position. Now, this, this being said, there are still, you know, issues uh, that when you really look at the ideal security, so the ideal security is you want to essentially uh, ensure that the data, that you secure the data at the data level itself. The, with the current computing environment, you put the data in a database, and then you know that data is there, and anybody who has access to the database can get to that data. So you have the issue of access uh, controls. In the cloud computing environment, I think you could go one step further and build into your application the capabilities of essentially having an application whereby you could decide how much permission do you want to have uh, that data uh, 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 being aware of? So for example, some type of data you could say you cannot print. Uh, some other kind of data you could say it's totally public or it's only you who can have access to that. So all of that security has to really be built in and ideally what you want is more standards because the last thing you want to do, again, in that new world is to have disparate system which are totally incompatible and every player's online, if you prefer, cloud computing vendors doing what the high tech industry has been very famous for is to essentially trap you into a very proprietary solution. So all of these standards today are yet to be sort of defined. Some are there, some are not there. So we still have ground you know, to cover and that's why alliances, if you prefer, of companies and alliances of customers together, uh, we have to define all of these standards. And so cloud computing could become uh, not only pervasive, but also very secure at the same time. We felt many, many times that we were like Galileo, uh, trying to convince the Catholic, the Catholic Church that the sun was not rotating around uh, the earth, that it was the opposite. And when you look back, in fact, Copernic, uh, 50 or 70 years earlier, had already, you know, postulated the heliocentricity of, uh, of, uh, of the universe and uh, of, of, of our galaxy. 
And so uh, we felt like that because it's very counterintuitive for security people which jobs was to essentially control the data, ensure that the data was protected, to suddenly say, or oh, let the data go out. And not, of course, realizing that if you give the data to somebody else and that somebody else is better capable of securing it, taking care of than yourself, in fact, that's a better proposition. So it has been a long road, uh, but we knew we were right. So we kept on going, and so one customer at a time, convincing one customer after the next, you know, we had, for example, a bit, you know, with GE, but we met with them four years ago, and at that time they were not really ready. And now, four years later, they have now standardized on Qualys and deployed Qualys everywhere. So we were patient, and we knew we were right, and we built a business, but it was a lot of convincing to do. Now, the other element was that the IT people didn't really like cloud computing or SaaS, because suddenly you have nothing to do. Because when you go to the cloud, you essentially, you don't need any more IT, and the security is totally different. So the paradigm of security sh shifts. So obviously, humans don't like change. So our biggest enemy was change, but we were persistent, we knew, and we had wonderful customers. I mean, we had customers like Dupont, and so many, many customers, our early adopters, they really helped us, they, they shared the same value that we had, they knew that that was the future, uh, and today, we have 40% of the Fortune 100 which have deployed Qualys. So, which is a significant success. So, we have very small companies and we have very large companies, essentially, which have deployed Qualys. So, for the sec security IT market, this is a big challenge because what I think, you know, not only uh, everybody now is forced to look, look, have a very hard look, and then eliminate cost, you know, whenever possible. But then this is also going to accelerate the movement toward cloud computing because cloud computing does offer, uh, you know, significant, you know, cost of reduction. And this, despite, you know, you saw some reports from companies like McKinsey, you know, starting, uh, you know, to dispute the fact that cloud computing maybe not the panacea, and but maybe not the best solution. That in fact it costs more. Uh, the mainframe computing vendors remind me of IBM trying to push SNA saying, you know, the networking uh, has to be done still with the mainframe, which obviously didn't make any sense. So today cloud computing is, is significantly more cost effective. So it creates a huge challenge for the, for the IT industry as a whole, but it's also a huge opportunity. Because, of course, if you now embrace, and this is in fact what is going to be my keynote at RSA on Thursday, if you embrace, you know, the cloud computing model, then of course you're going to help your company becoming more effective. So you still have to take care of the current situation, which is very complex. In fact, uh, I will speak at, at my keynote of what I call the inconvenient truth in the security today, which is the fact that securing the current computing infrastructure not only is it becoming harder, but you could even make the case that it's becoming impossible. Technology moves too fast, the, the, the patch cycles take too long, the, the release of new versions take very long, and so how could you, and then the companies are not equipped to do that. So with that recession, you know, and the budget being through, it's going to be even harder. So that, I believe, is going to accelerate that movement toward cloud computing which of course will force people to essentially re-evaluate themselves and what they do, which again, it could be very challenging for some people and it could be huge opportunities you know, for, for others.